Hey, good morning. My name is Scott. I'm one of the pastors here at Seal Covenant Church. I just want to welcome you to church with us this morning. We are so glad that you joined us today. And if this is your first time with us, we're glad that you found us. If you've been here before, we're so glad that you've come back. And I'll just tell you, I'm back. I've been gone for about a week and a half. I had some time off with family vacation, which was awesome. And then I continued that vacation by dropping two of my kids off at the best university in the world, Washington State, go Cougs, and um, getting them started on their college career for this year. And now I'm taking a couple of days. I've been back and at the church, but I'm headed out for the final few days of my vacation. And I am excited to be back. Um, I've been excited to be in this sermon series. It's called Surrender to Love. Pastor Rebecca did an incredible job kicking it off. And then last week we had Pastor Aust Austin Holman who joined in, a pastor and a person that I love and appreciate. And then I am excited because not this Sunday, but next Sunday, I'm going to close out this series. And I'm just going to tell you, God has been working on my head and on my heart. And I've been writing out that sermon for the last two weeks. So I'm excited to share that with you. But I'm also excited for this morning because this morning you're going to hear from somebody else who I also greatly love and appreciate. And she's a person that I first knew as one of my students when I was an assistant principal at the junior high school. Um, her name is Katie Hutchinson. And at that time, I knew her as Katie Everett's, but she's our youth pastor. And this is her very first time preaching for us here at Sela Covenant Church. And here's what I will tell you about Katie. Early on when she was a student, you could see that she was an incredible individual. She was a leader within our school. And what I loved is the way she led because it didn't matter who she was with, she honored them, she respected them, and she gave them her time. And she was this incredible kid, and I so appreciated her. And then it was fun because then as I left the school system and I went to work at a church in Yakima, she started attending that church and that youth group. And I watched this amazing leader become an even better leader as she grew in her relationship with Jesus and in her faith because she started to step into these gifts that God had given her. And then as I transitioned out of that church in Yakima to come here to seal a covenant, um, that church hired her. And again, I got to watch her grow more as she started to recognize this call on her life towards ministry. And today we get to experience that as she preaches. And so I'm going to start us off with a prayer. I'm going to pray over Katie. I'm going to pray over our town. As we've been talking about, we have lots going on. I just want to encourage you that if, if you have things going on in life, we know this is difficult as we are not gathering in person as a church. We're still planning, praying, and preparing for when we can. But if you need something, call us, email us, text us. We want to be here to support you, even though we know that support has to look different. So I'm going to pray, and then I am so excited to introduce Katie Hutchinson. So pray with me. Father God, you are good in it all. You are present in it all. And we thank you that even in these challenging times, whether it's the politics, the, the tension that is in our city, in our town, in our country, or COVID, all of it, you are present. None of it catches you off guard. Father God, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to how you want us to move, react, and respond in this time, and let us do it with love, and let us do it well. Father God, I thank you for Katie. I thank you for the message that she's going to share with us this morning. Father God, I just pray that you open our ears and our hearts and our eyes to how you want us to hear this message and then respond. I pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here's Pastor Katie. Good morning, Sela Covenant Church and anyone new joining us here this week. No matter where you're tuning in from, we want to say thank you for being with, with us here today and thank you for worshiping with us. My name is Katie Hutchinson and I'm one of the pastors here at Sela Cove, more specifically over the youth ministry. And today I have the amazing privilege of leading you through our third week in our surrender series. In week one, we heard from Pastor Rebecca how our surrender always begins with love from a God who says, there are no strings attached. I just want to be in relationship with you. And then in week two, we had the privilege of hearing from our guest speaker, Pastor Austin Holman from Yakima Foursquare Church, that true and healthy surrender stems not from fear of what happens if we don't, but authentic love for the Father when we do. This week, I will be continuing the conversation by focusing on a word that is a hard pill to swallow sometimes, and that word is obedience. 
But before I begin, I'm going to open us up in a short prayer and share a story about myself with all of you. So join me. Father God, we love you and we worship you. Let this time be glorifying to who you are. God, would these words not be my own, but would they be yours? Would they be edifying to you? And would we learn more about your nature to love us? And would we learn more about what it looks like to be obedient to you in our surrender to you? In your name we pray. Amen. Well, everyone, as it is my first time preaching on a Sunday morning here at Sela Cub, I thought it no better to start my message than with a story about my disobedience as a child. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pastor Katie could never have been a disobedient child. She's such an angel. Or maybe you weren't thinking that at all. Now, all jokes aside, I was actually a pretty good kid. In fact, both of my siblings and I were. As I try to recall on times where we were ever truly in trouble, it's actually quite difficult to pinpoint specific memories that make me think, oh yeah, that was really bad. I even went straight to the source, that's right. I texted my mom inquiring about any time she could remember when I was disobedient. She got back to me and said, I'll have to think you were a pretty good kid and lo and behold, she never got back to me. So I guess I am perfect. I did, however, think of a time involving preteen Katie and her stepmom. You see, when I was younger, when I was 11, I used to visit my dad and stepmom on the weekends and during the summers for a few weeks at a time. My stepmom was always finding cool activities for us to do. We'd make stepping stones for the garden, t-shirts to wear to Seahawks games, and then one time, decoupage plates. For my less crafty friends who do not know what decoupage is, it's where you take a clear glass surface. For us, it was dinner plates. You apply pieces of paper or pictures face down. You take an adhesive called Mod Podge, a little bit like Elmer's glue. You seal it over the top with some acrylic paint and then some clear spray paint, and then the wonder sets in. All directions aside, decoupage was right up my alley. Upon my learning, I must have made around five plates in an evening. I was hooked. Now, the next time I visited my parents, I had a friend with me. Her name was Crystal. And I really wanted her to get to decoupage as well, as much as any eager preteen kid might be to teach their friends something new. But my stepmom was working that day and said that we would have to wait eight hours until she got home to decoupage. After all, we were gonna be using acrylic paint and glue. It's definitely a messy project for 11 year olds to handle. So for a while we were obedient and we found activities to do, jumping on the trampoline, watching TV, snack breaks, but the boredom broke me and I said, well, I know where she keeps the supplies. We could easily just go get them, make a plate or two, and then put all the stuff back before she ever gets home. So we did. First off, this box of supplies was in an outdoor shed filled with other totes that looked exactly the same. Finding it was no simple task. And then we got inside with every intent to be careful and cover our tracks so no one knew we had done it on our own. It wasn't until Dear Crystal wiped her dirty paintbrush on a decorative hand towel from a Mexico vacation, irreplaceable, that I knew we were not being as sneaky as we thought we were. In fact, we had lost track of time and my stepmom walked in shortly after we started to clean up, only to see that we had done just what she had asked us not to do. She wasn't happy. In fact, I think it was truly the first time I'd ever felt her be ashamed of me. And if I had just been obedient and waited the short eight hours it took for her to get home, we probably would have decoupaged all night until our little fingers fell off and I would not have felt the discomfort of my stepmom's disapproval. A tiny amount of discomfort versus the large amount we actually felt when all was said and done. Because you see, being obedient, while it's not always ideal or easy or the most comfortable option is always the most freeing and leads to the absolute best for us. The same can be said with our walks with Christ. Being obedient to what God calls you to will not always be easy. In fact, in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 through 14, Jesus tells us, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. How many times have we done what everyone else was doing just because it seemed easiest, or like it was the more fun option? A lot, right? It's a habit we learn as children and carry on with us into our adult life. Maybe you even heard the infamous, well, if so-and-so jumped off of a cliff, would you do it too? From a parent at a young age. 
It might be easy to do what the world is doing or to do what brings us instant gratification, but is it honoring to Jesus and is it what is truly best for us? You see, our obedience is an extension of love in our act of surrender. While God doesn't force us to be obedient, he feels a deep love from us when we are. And he tells us that life comes from that obedience, not death, but life. Maybe you've experienced a time where you were obedient and you were burned by it, where you did what someone asked you to do and it didn't pay off the way that you thought it would and that person let you down. Maybe you've had a parent or a teacher or a coach who did not meet your obedience with love, acceptance, and gratitude. I'm here to remind you that in our obedience to God, he will never fail us or let us down and he will always celebrate when we choose to follow the call that he has on our lives. See, unlike humans and all of our imperfections, Jesus is perfect. He loves us in an absolutely perfect way and he will not let us down. See, that's the difference between being obedient to people in our lives versus being obedient to the, the Father. So the beauty in all of this is that even though being obedient to God isn't the easiest or most enjoyable path to follow, it's always the most freeing. You see, we serve a God who wants to free us of the burdens of life. And there's no better story in our Bible that illustrates that very fact than the story of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, every Easter, we look back to the, the story of Jesus' crucifixion, a horrific event in where a man, sinless and perfect, listened to the call of God on his life to be nailed to a cross, a form of sacrifice reserved for criminals and sinners, all so that for generations to come, we, and you and I, and all of our ancestors could live a full life surrounded by the presence of God. In perfect harmony with God, in perfect obedience to him, Jesus knew this was the only way. Now, I would not be reading the story of his crucifixion, but rather just before, as Jesus talks with his disciples, preparing them for what was to come. If you've never had the opportunity to read the complete story of Jesus' death, I challenge you to do so today. It's a story of deep sorrow, but also a story of great victory and of obedience. After the message, there will be a list of questions as well as references to where you can read the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, so stay tuned for that. If you would like to follow along, I will be reading out of Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 27, which says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. There's a few things I want to point out to you in these verses. First, you may have noticed that Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan, you're a stumbling block to me, to Peter. Upon his disapproval and horror of Jesus' revelation of the future events to come, this is the first piece of evidence that even Jesus believed that what he had to do wasn't going to be easy, but necessary. The second thing I want to focus on is verse 25, which says, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Jesus is telling us that by losing our lives or really leaving our old lives or our old habits behind, we will find him and find a more fulfilling life in him. One filled with more joy and more love than we have ever known or understood before. Now, most of us know that after his conversation with the disciples, Jesus went on to be betrayed by Judas, was apprehended, and then put to death on a cross only to rise up three days later. You see, Jesus did not have to endure all of that. <laughs> 
but he did. He didn't have to walk his cross up that hill and agree to be nailed into it for his enemies to see and mock him and for his loved ones to see and endure excruciating sorrow, but he did. And he did so out of love for us but also out of obedience and love for his father. And if you didn't notice before, he invited us to join him. He asked us to take up our own crosses and join him. He said by losing our lives, more specifically our old lives separated from him, we would find life in him. Surrendering and being obedient is not going to be a cakewalk. In fact, it requires a conscious daily decision to choose what God is leading us to. Obedience and surrender go against our innate desire to control the world around us and just do what we want to do. But I want to share with you something that has held true in my life. Choosing to be obedient to what God is calling you is always worth it. You see, I wouldn't be standing here today as a pastor if I hadn't been obedient to his call in my life. At a summer camp only two weeks before I left for college, I heard the voice of God calling me into youth ministry. Now, I could have ignored it. I could have just left for school and pursued a degree in the medical field as planned so that I could make lots of money, but I didn't, and I love my job. No amount of wealth could ever amount to the joy I experience from getting to spend time with your students learning about Jesus. A temporary discomfort for permanent joy. And during an internship at that same church I was attending the camp at, I was given a clear sign from God to break up with a boy I had been dating for five years. I didn't want to do that. In fact, it was actually one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. But if I hadn't, I wouldn't be married to the amazing man of God that I am today, living each day thankful that I found someone so perfect for me. I didn't end up where I am today on my own. It took a lot of time praying to, arguing with, and crying at Jesus to end up in this place. And let me tell you, I regret none of that. Being obedient to God and the call he has on my life has been hard, but it has been worth it and truly the most rewarding and freeing experience. And for those of you who haven't experienced that for yourselves, or maybe you have and you've taken a step away from that obedience to God, I wanna invite you into that this morning. In just a moment, I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Rebecca and the worship team. But first, I want to pray with all of you and I want to share one last thing. Obedience is hard, but it's worth it. Surrendering your life to Jesus is always going to be worth it. On days where you don't understand why he's leading you down a certain path, remember his act of obedience, the one that purchased eternal life for all of us. So my final challenge to you today is to talk with God, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's prayer, journaling, seeking guidance from other people, whatever it takes, just spend some time asking him, what next? Surrender your hearts to him and in an act of obedience, see what comes next. Father God, we love you and we worship you. You are the one true king. God, today as we go off and do whatever we have planned to do, would we be reminded by you? Would we be talked to by you? Would we pray to you in obedience and hear what is next to come? God, would we turn our ears on? Would we open our hearts? Would we open our hands to what you have for us and what you are guiding us to? Lord, you are perfect. We trust your decisions on our lives and we open ourselves up to the possibilities that are ahead for us when we choose to surrender our lives fully to you, especially through obedience. God, let these people be blessed as they go throughout their days. And God, Again, thank you. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Sela Covenant. I'm Pastor Rebecca. I hope you enjoyed Pastor Katie's sermon. As a staff, we have loved leaning in to this surrender series. We are excited that we still have one more week to enjoy it, one more week to talk about how we can lean in to the incredible, unconditional, without fear, obedience-seeking love of God. So thank you for joining us on this journey, and we will see you next week. Now, hey, one of the things that a lot of people have been asking us about is how can we serve right now? Knowing that there are a lot of organizations that are maybe on pause or closed down, knowing that those that are open have limitations, how can we still be a people of action and service? Well, a couple weeks ago on Sela Good News, 
we interviewed Mike from Camp Hope and a lot of you really resonated with that. You have been excited about what Camp Hope is doing and how they are serving people experiencing homelessness, people in transition right here in the valley. And some of our Sela Cove people have actually gotten involved. There are some safe ways to be serving at Camp Hope. And if you are interested in volunteering, we would love to hear that. Not just to know that you're interested, hey, that's awesome. We want to get you connected. So if you want to just drop us a quick email or maybe give us a call, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how you're doing, first of all. And then we would love to connect you with ways that you can be serving in our valley right now. So I'm going to be praying over our offering, and as soon as I'm done with that, there's going to be some sermon questions and then a time of worship. I want to really encourage you, take the time and discuss those questions. They are there for you as an individual. They're there for you as a family. They're there for you to engage with your community group, with your friends, maybe even a neighbor that you don't often talk with. Those are there so that you can go deeper into the words that are being spoken on a Sunday morning or hey, whenever it is that you're listening to this. But we also wanna know what you're thinking. How are those conversations going? What is it sparking in you? Are there things you're concerned by? Are there things you're excited about? Are there brand new things that are coming to light in your life? We wanna know. Please connect with us and let us know. And if we could help you discuss even further, we wanna know that too. So as always, thank you, because you have been giving regularly, not just your money, not just your resources, you've been giving your time. You have been taking care of one another. You have been showing up for your community, and we are so grateful. We are proud to belong to you and that you belong to us. So I'm going to pray over our morning's offering, and then you can enjoy the rest of our worship together. Let's pray. God, we thank you because we know that every good and right thing comes from you. We know that even in the midst of challenge, you are blessing us. God, you are blessing us so that we can go out and be a blessing. So Lord, in everything we do, would we seek ways to continue to surrender? God, would we surrender all of our fears? Would we surrender our doubts? Would we surrender our uncertainties about the future, knowing that our future is in you? Lord, that all of these things, uh, all these things that to us are so unknown, Lord, that they are not unknown to you. God, I thank you for the offering that people are going to be giving today and tomorrow and the rest of this week. Lord, would you take it? Would you bless it? Would you multiply it? And then would you send it out into your world? Lord, would your world know that it is deeply loved because of those monies that go out? God, we thank you for the ways that you continue to provide, even in uncertainty. Lord, we love you and we thank you for being with us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we hope that you enjoy your discussion, enjoy the rest of this worship time, and we will see you next week.
from my mother's womb You have chosen me Love has called my name I've been born again Into your family Your blood flows through my veins I'm no I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it My fears were drowning in perfect love You rescued me A child of God